Hello and welcome to the show. This week's fair race versus the community. We were to go racing with B-class German cars. First race would go to the Hockenheim Short Circuit, a track that we always have good fun at when it comes to versus the community. Uh, pretty sure they were four wide at some point on the exit of turn one at least. Uh, turn one here is always an interesting, interesting corner. It's very, very fast. Turn two can be a bit of a pain as well. A few cars, unfortunately, would end up involved in shunts. Most of us made it through relatively well. You see me in the SLR having to take to the grass. <laughs> Got a little bit forced out wide through there. This group of cars that we are following now, the BMW M1 was trying to have a look at getting past the Scirocco. Surprisingly, Scirocco and the Audi there, much quicker than the M1 in a straight line. BMW, though, far faster when it came to the corners. This Audi was suddenly struggling when it came to Hockenheim. It didn't actually take long for the field to spread out. There was still though plenty, as you can see in the background, plenty of cars close together, but it did actually get kind of strung out quite quickly. This Audi, though, was struggling through the turns. Hockenheim short, very much a handling track. Yes, there are a couple of straights for the Audi to try and make the most of its straight line speed, but yeah, the handling was uh, causing a few issues. And in doing all of that, he compromised one of the, BM the M1s then allowed the other one to get sort of both of them in uh, one go. The early part of this race, as I said, still fairly large groups, even if it did start getting strung out uh, quite quickly. This Mercedes was coming under fire from a Golf into Turn 1. The 190E, though, has the grip, holds it around the outside and gets away with running it sideways on the kerb. That's a good manoeuvre. It is tough to hang a car around the outside at Turn 1, so he did a great job to uh, hold that position. The <laughs> Red Audi continued to be a little bit of a nuisance. It was quite difficult to pass as all three of us go on two wheels going through the first quarter. Because of that straight line speed, it could be a little bit difficult to pass. I got stuck a couple of laps uh, behind this RS1 uh, <laughs> trying to get past. Turn two, I got up alongside. I could outbreak him, could turn tighter, but here comes the speed. Ignore the uh, the gallery of lagged out uh, 190Es parked down there, the ghost cars. Uh, yeah, the straight line speed down here. The Audi was back past. I tried to hang it around the outside. I just wasn't close enough. Again, tried to stick my nose up the inside around here. Still not close enough. And I had to be where. The M1's right behind me, and that is a very, very quick car, so I couldn't compromise myself too much. As we run through this next very, very fast corner, the Audi goes defensive. I spot my opportunity to try something at the hairpin. It's around the outside for the SLR. The Audi gets sideways and then is helped a little bit by the M1 that uh, promptly follows through as well. Uh, yeah, although I, I was passed around the outside before that, uh, that incident. Yeah, the SLR, great car. Also, why it's not orange, I couldn't bring myself to paint it bright orange with black stripes. It, it didn't seem fitting. So, yeah, that's why I'm running the, uh, the standard livery, if you like. Further back, and as always, Hockenheim was proving good fun. Plenty of close action this time between a Golf and a Scirocco. I'm assuming a rear-wheel drive Scirocco, judging by that very big slide. That big slide, though, looked like it had cost the Scirocco the position. He just got on the power a little bit too soon, lost that bit of momentum, allowed the Golf to fight back. But, uh, unfortunately for the Golf, he locked up. Going into the hairpin could have been a slow-mo lag incident from the looks of things possibly down there. But, uh, yeah, Golf is uh, off the track, and the BMW is now in close proximity. And you can kind of see throughout the field, you know, even as even as the race did spread out more, these groups emerged, and this, this was the front group. Volkswagen Beetle was leading the way from an M5 and an M1, but these three remained very close. They swapped positions a number of times. We're almost going three wide here, <laughs> down into the second corner. The M5 stuck on the outside, doesn't really fancy his chances out there, but a big slide from the Beetle allows him to draw alongside, but the Beetle's got the straight line speed. The M1's here having a look as we run down this straight. The M1 is actually alongside and past the M5 at this stage. And the Beetle, this is good news for the Beetle. However, the Beetle's slow around the next corner. So it sort of ends up on the grass a little bit. That slows him down. And because the M1 is stuck behind him, it slows the M1 down. And the M5 makes the most of it, rounds up the pair of them. A great opportunistic move. Saw the chance to go around the outside of the Beetle. And that put him back into the lead. Beetle tried to get to the inside. There wasn't really a Beetle sized gap for that particular manoeuvre. A little bit of a nudge from the, the Volkswagen there. And yet that's how the race went on for the latter stages between <laughs> between this top three. It was fantastic. Uh, fantastic fun. And again, you know, further back we saw we saw more battlings going on this time between a couple more of the, the BMWs running down towards the hairpin. Green car gets to the inside, but we have seen cars going around the outside. The white car determined not to uh, give up the position. 
car on the inside gets a slide, white cars across the curb causing issues, there's BMWs on two wheels, and this is one of the things that we have seen plenty of times in Versus the Community. You get caught up in a battle, you get slowed down momentarily when cars around you are this close and you're gonna be in trouble. And sure enough, the E30 M3 is going to uh, make up a position. Spotted his opportunity, with the car being slow off the corner after a little slide, and he's going to make up the place. So yeah, you've got to be careful. If you are going to get overtaken, you don't want to lose too much time. At the front and still, still they're going out of the Volkswagen sliding through that very, very fast corner here. Uh, I was in fourth. I was bringing an M1 with me. We were catching this group quite quickly towards the end of the race. We ran out of laps as the M5 did his absolute best to hold this very quick M1 off. As we come into the final corners, the M1 gets the cutback through the second to last corner. It's up the inside into the final turn, which is where you want to be, but runs the curb, puts the M1 up onto two wheels, slides it a little bit out of the corner, and that's enough to slow him down. It gives the M5 the victory from the M1 in second. The Beetle claims third, while well, I would get fourth with the SLR, and another BMW M1 would come in fifth. Fantastic race. A fantastic race. Hockenheim never really fails to disappoint, uh, in all honesty. And that one there, there was certainly lots of uh, close racing. Round number two would take the cars to Monza. Very fast circuit, this one. Complete opposite to the Hockenheim short circuit. This largely about the straight line speed. Turn one, often chaotic down here. Maybe there's a little bit of lag on the replay, so a lot of cars look like they're locking up when they wouldn't have been, but you know. Uh, it, was, it was chaos, as you could imagine. Three and four cars wide through here. Uh, there was plenty of bumping. Amazingly, on the most part, every, actually everybody got through the first chicane right. A Golf just ran out of road. Too many cars tried to fit in the same point and got spat out through the next turn. But amazingly, aside from that, we all got through these first quarters remarkably well, which is quite rare for <laughs> For Monza, there was a little bit of bumping, but no real major harm was done. It's up to this next next chicane. A couple of lagged out ghost cars again messing about with the replays. A few people outbreak themselves, ran wide, ended up in the tyre bundles. There's a camper van in the background. Had to take avoiding action to not end up in the tyres. Yeah, it's um, with this many cars running close together. Uh, a few little mistakes were, were creeping in, but on the most part for Monza, everything went relatively well but you'll very quickly see the importance of straight line speed around this circuit this gullwing that we're following here is a pretty quick car in a straight line the bmw not so much 2002 turbos though well they are absolute monsters the way these ones have been built are phenomenal you can see the speed of that purple car has soared past he's off after a 190 e there's another white 2002 turbo here come from absolutely nowhere you couldn't even see it in the earlier shots that is the straight line speed those cars could be getting it was a lot it was unstoppable amounts of straight line speed they weren't very good through the corners but they could make up so much time down the street and look at it go it's like it's just a completely different class admittedly if that was driving at hockenheim it would be awful it would be absolutely terrible but around here you could make the most of that straight line speed. At the front, it was a Corrado that was leading the way, was coming under increasing pressure from the Gullwings. I was expecting the Gullwings to be the very fast cars in this class, and they certainly could be pretty quick at a straight line. This one got brave, tried to go around the outside. That is a tough place to go around the outside, but it will put you on the inside for the chicane. They both run a little too deep. The Volkswagen, in the end, probably been better off breaking a bit earlier ago for the cutback. He tried to stick it around the outside, but they both couldn't get stopped. Both trying to be the last of the late breakers, and it didn't quite work out for them there, and the Gullwing would move himself up into the lead but the 2002 turbos they were <laughs> they were coming now for me uh, my car was a little bit more of an overall build it wasn't really a, a straight line speed intended car it was pretty good for a b-class car straight line speed was pretty good in this vehicle but uh, it was yeah it was no no match for the 2002 turbos and some of the gull wings there were still some handling parts to make it you know drive around the corners quite well and it was putting up a fight. My car was okay around here. As we see, as we leave the, uh, the Ascari chicane there, I could carry good speed through the chicane. And I had, uh, it wasn't the slowest car in a straight line by a long way. I could still put up a fight. There was another SLR in this race. Only two of us ever ran an SLR. The, uh, the one ahead of me here, you can see with the aero bits on, his was much more of a power build. Quicker than mine in a straight line, but I could close on him uh, through the corners. I didn't really have the speed, though, at this circuit. Even this car, which is it's a decent car, uh, this vehicle, is no match for some of the specifically power-built cars. They were just just too fast. They were pretty much too fast for everything. The Gullwing led for the opening laps, but uh, very quickly was being caught. I mean, you can see the size of the gap the Gullwing has coming onto the straight, and that Gullwing is not slow. That is uh, quite a lot of a power-built Gullwing there. <laughs> the 2002 Turbo 
absolutely monsters it down this straight. Gets up the inside, gets on the brakes, and can get stopped. Yeah, the goal wing, a little bit better through the corner. Still not easy to drive. I mean, it, it's incredibly difficult, I would imagine, to drive these 2002 turbos. They are not easy cars to drive because they are pretty much no handling parts, all power. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, they're, not, they're not easy things to get around a circuit and to keep things clean. But if you can, that straight line speed, again, you can see the size of the gap this, this car could uh, pull out. It wasn't the only power monster going on further back. Middle, you know, this was over, I think it was outside the top 10. This little fight was going on between these vehicles. This carried on for a large part of the race. A camper van, a Golf, a BMW, I think it's an M3, and then something else. And, uh, oh, 198, there we go. The camper van was just monstrously fast. Incredibly quick down this main start finish straight. Terrible under brakes, terrible through the corners, but it's so much speed that he could really make a nuisance of himself. These cars were having a really tough time trying to get past the camper van because as soon as it got to a vague acceleration zone, off it goes again. It's now, just down towards his next corner. It's miles ahead by the time I get to the corner, then it's carefully does it. And of course, he's being helped by the fact that the three cars behind are all close together, all fighting amongst themselves. The 190E goes around the outside, which has a wheel on the dirt slightly and then there's an acceleration zone again and the camper's out of range the 190 is thinking about having a go up the inside can't quite put his car far enough alongside they kind of wiggle through the chicane the golf's now having a go the m3's having a go and now got an acceleration zone again and the camper van buggers off so yeah <laughs> there was a frustrating race for the cars stuck behind that uh, camper van as the field started to spread out a little bit more as it often does at, uh, at Monza, it was uh, one of the closest races over fourth place between the Corrado and the BMW M5. You see a few cars were close. Kind of people ended up sort of splitting up into pairs with uh, vehicles to race with around here. It was a little bit of a curious battle. The VW is surprisingly good top speed. The M5 was quicker accelerating, but the VW had a better top speed. Again, I'm assuming it's probably possibly a rear-wheel drive. Corrado? Oh, my, my guess would be that it probably is. He was coming under pressure from the M5. M5, though, was struggling to find a way past. Had a go at the inside. Couldn't quite make it stick. Bounces across the curves. Loses a little bit of, uh, of time. Yeah, straight line speed, of course, is, is phenomenally important. You can see the gaps behind these couple of pairs of cars. There, there were some quite large gaps going on uh, in the, the field at the front. And it was no real surprise what car would go on to uh, take victory. Yeah, these 2002 turbos were ridiculous. There was another one that would come home in third, ran out of laps to catch up to, uh, to second place. They were incredibly quick cars. Very easy to make mistakes and certainly not an easy victory. Not an easy keeping these vehicles on the road. But uh, yeah, that straight line speed, nothing, nothing could answer to them. I was a little bit unfortunate. I got turned around in an incident at some point and dropped and dropped through the field and made a couple of mistakes on my own. Uh, but I, my SLR is a good car, but nothing, nothing compared to these uh, 2002 turbos when it came to Monza. It was a Gullwing that came home in second for that one. Our final race would go to the Nürburgring GP circuit in the pouring rain and the camper van gets off to an absolutely blinding start. I'm assuming it's probably four-wheel drive with a, with a start like that and it was a very high-powered uh, camper van. Turn one, often chaotic here at Nürburgring. Sadly, not as neat as we did at Monza. One car got turned around and that caused all sorts of problems for the rest of the pack. The second one car gets turned around here. You Everybody kind of scatters trying to avoid it and that often causes a few more problems. So, yeah, a little bit unfortunate at uh, turn one here. These guys, they were fighting for position. The 190E trying to fend off some BMWs. Fortunately, I think it was an E30. Goes to the inside, across the puddle, loses control of the car, clips the back of the Mercedes. That's enough to put him around and uh, into the wall. The puddles are always a danger when it comes to racing in the rain. You know, going for overtakes, one thing we did find very much uh, about racing here is attacking and defending was all about trying to force your opponent to take a line that involved going across a puddle. If you could force them to take a line that meant going across a puddle, chances are you could either defend the position or, or gain the position because being compromised like that is such a huge thing when driving in weather conditions like this. And of course, the puddles being so massive around here. So yeah, that was kind of the tactics that were coming in in, uh, in this sort of racing, the 190E here trying the spectacular around the outside of the hairpin can't quite do it the m1 gets a weird on the puddle that puts his car a little bit sideways and the 190e slots into line now one of the big fears when you know forza 6 was announced as having rain we were talking about you know would wet races be a bad thing for versus community would we see lots of accidents would the racing be not as good in the wet and the complete opposite has happened 
when we do wet races, these are some of the closest, some of the most exciting races we do. I'm not quite sure how that works out, because it should be harder. The car should be more difficult to drive. There should be more mistakes and so on. But the races turned out to be fantastic. This was a big, big fight going on for the lower parts of the, <laughs> the top 10. I was involved. There was an Audi, and there's an RS2 getting a little bit slow off the hairpin. A couple of Scirocco's are fighting in here. There was an Audi. Uh, what's it called? The, the S1's made up three positions <laughs> through the chicane there. Just ran out of absolutely nowhere. Racing was fantastic in the raid. The Scirocco's were struggling with the straight line speed very quick through the corners and they were pretty much bump drafting their way down the start finish straight here. Yeah, the races in the rain have been exquisite. Coming towards turn one, we're trying to go three wide. <laughs> no, Burgering is never a good idea. The Scirocco's back out of it. The two Audis, think about it, Audi S1 actually goes very, very early on the brakes. The Scirocco and Audi get a little tangled together where the front of one car gets stuck on the rear of the other and neither of them can steer. And now we're going to go in two by twos through the next corner, avoiding the big puddle on the middle. Yeah, this is fighting for around 10th place. Uh, that's, that's, that's the kind of vicious fighting that goes on. My Mercedes was very quick here. This, this track really, really suited the SLR. I had a lot of speed around here because my car had better top speed than a lot of the handling cars, but, is, but was also very, very good through the corners. So overall, this was a fantastic car. I had, as you see, that out accelerated the Mercedes 190E out of the hairpin. Could just simply get past it before we even have to worry about this quick uphill section. And there's still plenty of grip in the SLR. I'm not sliding about. I'm not scrabbling. It would slide a little bit, as would any of these cars in these conditions. It's got 310 horsepower in this thing. It's still running standard tyres, admittedly maximum width ones, but um, hey, you know, I could get it sliding around a little bit, but it still had a lot of a lot of corner grip. So yeah, this this was a really very, very good car for this particular race. A BMW in front of me runs a little bit wide. I see my opportunity, although he's fighting with an Audi. They go too wide. That is a scary place to go too wide. I had a big off on lap one going through there. I just couldn't see where I was going in the spray, and that was one of the difficulties in this Mercedes seeing in the spray was quite awkward. I went to have a dive on the Audi, who equally got things wrong and couldn't stop. He brushes off the side of the M1. The <laughs> Audi goes for a spin. I have to take avoiding action in all of this. Sadly, couldn't quite make the move stick on the M1, and now there is a big, angry pack of cars right behind me as a 190E. It's fighting with a Beamer. The Scirocco's are getting involved in, uh, in all of that. It was a, yeah, it was a crazy opening couple of laps. Fantastic fun, though, i got to say. At the front, and it was an unusual battle. The uh, camper van was leading the way. It was not an easy camper van to drive. God knows how much power this thing had. It was a lot because its straight line speed was absurd. Horrible through the corners. The M1 so much faster. And then we come to a straight. I mean, the, the camper van was all out of shape. He was off the track at one point coming onto this, onto this sort of mini straight. <laughs> and the camper van will get the M1 as he has a go up the inside. Of course, the M1's going to have no issue holding it around the outside. And again, the camper van is sliding all over the place, but he compromised the M1. He caught, caught, forced sorry, the M1 across the puddle. That slows the M1 down a bit. And now comes that mighty camper van straight line speed. The MW had a really tough time finding a way past this camper van because it was so unbelievably fast accelerating out of out of these corners in the end it was only going to be a matter of time before the bmw would make a maneuver stick i mean again you see here the camper van couldn't get out of the hairpin but that acceleration keeps him ahead but the m1 will have, would eventually would eventually find a way past and could just break away through these next couple of corners get far enough out of range of the camper van so when they came to a straight it, the camper couldn't um couldn't sort of attack back I, I can't imagine how difficult that camper van was to drive around here especially not racing up against some of the cars that, uh, that he was fighting with that is it is seriously tough driving that sort of vehicle in in these conditions this was still the ongoing Scirocco battle. This went on for a large part of the uh, the race here. And, you know, this is a four-way. I think it got, at one stage it got up to almost a six-way battle briefly over sort of sixth, seventh place, and so on. It was incredible the amount of amount of cars involved in these. There were kind of two large groups formed. There was a big fight over second. There was a big fight behind us for this group, and more and more cars were joining into the groups. It was a crazy race, and this is what we want to see with uh, with Versus Community races. Uh, for whatever reason, the wet weather races seem to be the ones that are proving the most exciting. Yeah, the Scirocco's were struggling with that straight line speed against some of the cars, but they had the cornering grip. Up at the front, this was the group uh, all fighting over second place. An M5, my Mercedes, the crazy camper van, actually two M5, sorry, my Mercedes, and the absolutely crazy camper van. And we were having exactly the same problems the M1 had, in that we could, were really struggling to clear the camper van fully. You see, we, we fight our way through here. I go round the outside of the Volkswagen, no problem whatsoever. 
and then we come to a straight and then the Volkswagen buggers off completely and uh, yeah we were getting slowed down in the end I I had a, I made a couple of mistakes I break myself into turn one and this one was probably the bigger one trying to go around the outside of the camper van I didn't quite see the puddle that is enough to tip the Mercedes sideways and uh, put it across the gravel a little bit of a shame for me certainly because this Mercedes was blindingly fast around this track but you know that was the difficulties uh, of trying to find a way past that absurd camper van and still, you know, this group further back, the Scirocco's had an unfortunate laggy incident that would take them out. But um, one of them you could just see was uh, to the back of this little group. The Beetle here trying the bravery manoeuvre around the outside of the 190E. Couldn't quite make it stick there. Again, thinks about having a go at the chicane. Can't quite do it. Little bit of contact between these cars. But these groups carried on fighting for the entirety of the race. These groups were, were fighting like this, which is always good to see. Four and five car battles are always fantastic. So yeah, it was good to see the races carrying on. At the front, and it was the BMW M1 that would go on to take victory. Having managed to clear that camper van, he could pull a sizable gap to the rest of us. I would have loved to have had a battle with him. My Mercedes was incredibly quick. I believe I got fastest lap uh, around this track by a fair margin. I would love to have had a chance, a shot at catching up to the uh, M1. A couple of mistakes by me and getting tangled up in battles uh, meant that it was not to be. Unfortunately for the poor camper van, he was running third. Made a mistake on the final lap that would gift me third place while it was the uh, blue M5 that would take second. Thoroughly enjoyable Nurburgring race, though. The leader did get a little bit lonely after the opening few laps as all of us, all of us fought the camper van. It was, uh, yeah, a great fun race, though. Lots and lots of, of four or five car battles going on, which is quite rare to see. Anyway, that is it for this week's Fail Race versus the Community. The next one shall be held on Thursday, the 19th of November. We are going to be racing Mazda MX-5 Cup cars. We're, the, we're going to be running them completely stock, no tuning allowed. They're completely standard MX-5 Cup cars because that is always likely to be a, an awful lot of fun. If you want to sign up and take part in this event, then you can go to our forums. There will be a link in the description. Find the Ferris versus the community section and the sign up will be done in there. But uh, that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.